and powerful enough to create that response. And most of the time you see them, they're not. Staying in those lower zones can actually increase your capacity oh. at the higher zones. It's the same argument of repeated movement patterns. You're still running, you're pounding pavement, you're pounding on the treadmill, your joints are still taking that same impact. Switch it up, go ride a bike. Hey guys, we're back with another episode of the Strong Goal Podcast. Again, I am Wendy, joined by Rob and Dom. So of course we're talking training, but today we're going to take a break from the strength training talk and we're going to talk all things conditioning. So I'm just going to throw a couple of questions out to you guys and we'll see where this conversation takes us. So first of all, how do you know what type of conditioning you should be doing? You want to go first? Yeah, go first. Um, depends on, obviously, like you have a multiple different factors that go into it. Your goals, your overall ability to condition, whether that's you know high intensity, low intensity, mid intensity. Um, and also your interests, like what really interests you in the sense of like how you feel as a human. Like, do I want to be somebody who does marathon training? If I don't care about marathon training, why am I running high levels of mileage, right? Mm -hmm. Also, if I'm a, not a swimmer, but I'm diving into a pool every week, it doesn't make any sense, right? Why mm -hmm. am I working on that, that kind of aerobic system? So for me, those are my main factors that I count for myself. Um, and also, I like to explore and experiment because I have clients all the time that are, you know, runners, swimmers, you know, triathletes. And they're asking me, you know, how do I go about my training cycle. If I know better but do my own doings, I can actually you know, prescribe better or even find better knowledge mm -hmm. to help them out, whatever right. the case may be. And injuries too. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Um, a lot to do is, is it just general population for like health, wellness, and yeah. like longevity? Yeah. Or am I working with an athlete that are like really exactly. specific? Yeah. Then then I go from there. Yeah. So if, we, if you go health and wellness, a lot of times I ask them, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. And usually if they're doing one thing without the other, mm -hmm. then we start incorporating. So basically like shorter, like anaerobic or longer aerobic work. Mm -hmm. One or the other, they like to do a lot. And then I would just kind of like start blending in the other one. Right. Yeah. If they're not a specialist. Yeah. Try then, to... yeah. Right. Right. Absolutely. So you we're hearing a lot all the time. I mean, like Peter Atia talks about zone two training and, you know, this coach talks about this zone, whatever. What do you guys think about zone training? I guess. First of all, kind of give a quick primer to everyone about it, and then who should be doing what? Yeah, zone training, so there's five different zones, and zone training goes from one to five, and five is sprinting where you'd have to take a long rest after and not yeah. be able to talk at all, yeah. and then one is basically walking. Zone two is in the middle, and it has a lot of benefits. You gotta keep track of your heart rate to really know if you're in it. Yeah. So like for most of the general population, it's like with that type of conditioning, you try to keep it like conversational, but it's really hard to get them to keep that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in zone two, you want to like an amount of time going at a certain heart rate and more of a conversational piece, anywhere from 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 minutes. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't have to be in one continuous block. Mm -hmm. So it's like being able to pace and have a conversation. Yeah. So that's like what zone two, and it's usually best done with some kind of typical, easy, repeatable yeah. movement. Yeah, not biking, running. Yeah, low skill. Yeah. You know, something that, you, like you said, conversational will be good yeah. obtain. And it's something that is like piquing your interest, right? I think a lot of the times people get into zone training and then they fall in and out of zones because there's no interest in it, right? Does it doesn't have to be something that's like highly skilled, not to be concentrated, but the idea like biking. I can I can bike and, and have interest, whether you're doing it scenically, stationary, watching you know an instructor, whatever the case is. Those things pique your interest to where you're not just like dead in the brain and going into these weird one, two, three zones right. and then find yourself in four and you're like, what, 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 how the hell did I get Yeah, yeah zone two is so popular right now. It's all yeah. the rage. And it's, unless you have heart rate monitors on and know exactly what's going on, mm -hmm. also using other exercises to do zone two is really hard because blood pressure goes all over yeah. the place. Yeah. And so Transition. it's tough. When, yeah. when, when I'm with people, it, when I tell people, I might say zone two, but I'm really just trying to tell you to pace yes. right. for like so an amount of time. Yeah, 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 yes. And the, the, the little bit of, um, there's, there's like a few problems with zone two. When you do it, and if you're used to doing high intensity, it doesn't feel like you're doing anything. Right, right. Exactly. right. It does not feel like you're doing anything. And, and another argument. It feels like a waste of time. The people who do stay such in such a high intensity zone don't have the concentration to stay doing zone too long enough. Right. In their head, they're like, 20 minutes is perfect. If I did a 20-minute right. AMRAP, I'd be dying right now. And they're jumping around they're from jumping thing around. to thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so like sitting on something like cyclical. Yes, yeah. they yeah. don't realize, like Rob said, you have to be in zone two for 30, 35 minutes, 45 minutes. That's where you really get some of those deep benefits as opposed to 
the 15, 20 minute, I'm not saying those aren't beneficial in any means, but most people don't spend enough time in that zone right. to actually get, reap the benefit of what it's designed for. Yeah. Longer periods of time where you're breathing at that, that rate where you're pacing and you're in that true zone where there's 60, 70% of your max heart rate. Right, right. Most people don't get that. Is I it, think also people don't understand that staying in those lower zones can actually increase your capacity at oh. the higher zones. Like I, yeah. for instance, I did, I was injured for a long time years ago and I was just basically doing mobility work and zone two. And over time, like my pace in zone two, and I wore a heart rate monitor, it was, you know, yeah. super, uh, you know, calculated, but like say I was on the rower and I was at a 216 pace, you know, for a while in zone two, but then all of a sudden, wow, I'm at like, 210 and I'm still in zone two. So yeah. you you know, you do get more efficient and better. Absolutely. Well, you build a bigger aerobic pace. Yeah, exactly. And that's where it's been. Exactly. Yeah, and like, so it's that boring work is necessary. Aerobic or yeah. anaerobic, they both work off of the aerobic system. Absolutely. So it's like all involved. Yeah. Thank you. It's not exactly, it just doesn't, when you start going fast, the other one doesn't shut off. Yeah, it's yeah. still kind of there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, now, um, considering conditioning, do you think people should do it daily? Well, this is a tough argument. I. I, I mean, I don't think you need to. No. I don't think you need to. So for zone two and like conditioning work is probably one of the hardest things to program for a group class and try to get them to do it. They just, yeah. okay. and, and it's tough to get people to move that. and do you have enough equipment and can yeah, we go yeah. and everyone's going to go Staying faster. Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah, it's tough. I like the way we program from the group and like most people I would program would be one longer conditioning piece, like a steady state, mm -hmm. and then one more power interval based anaerobic yeah. and then you would cover like 90 percent of the people oh, yeah. and then you can like and then for that like 10 percent that you need to get a little more detailed then you can do that right right, right. right. absolutely i think you can do some form of conditioning every day and i mean this because like, there's multiple levels of conditioning right there's mm -hmm. five zones i could probably do all five zones in a week mm -hmm. right and without actually putting forth the effort right but the other the top three zones should be calculated and should be planned out. Mm -hmm. The other two you can do in passing. Like if you're just one of those people like, oh, I can't take a day off, go take a walk. Right. I think yeah. that's zone one, yeah. right? Truly, that's zone one. You can call it conditioning. You know, zone two could be your 40 minutes on the bike. Mm -hmm. Zone three could be a Metcon. Zone four could be a Metcon or sprint work. Zone five is, yeah, very yeah. rarely do you get in zone five, but that could be in that same exact category, right? right? People can do all five, but you shouldn't do all five. Mm -hmm. Or you shouldn't do conditioning every day. But if you did, zone one is walking. Because, you know, this is where you run into the problem. Let's say, like, because I'm talking about a group, and you got a six-day a week. Yeah. Then you only have an amount of time each day, the yeah. 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> then where, where do you, where, like, how many days a week do I do strength? How many days a week do I do some kind of conditioning or robo work? How many days? You know, so right. you're running into that. So that's where you run into the problem. You can make it a little more conditioning heavy, and then it would only be two strength days and then three conditioning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why you see a lot of people do strength, and then there's a conditioning involved at the same time, yeah, which that, yeah. you can do that to a certain extent. Like if you did strength work, and then you did like a zone two work after it, it wouldn't interrupt as much, like having yeah. that like yeah. adaptation. Yeah, that's calculated, right? Yeah, you're disruption. Right. Yeah, you're planning that, yeah. and there's no disruption. Yeah. Yeah. But it's in a class that would be really hard to do. Oh, yeah. You can't get the attention right. of people to do that. Plus, it's like insecurity. Like, I didn't do anything today. I got to run five miles. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I've seen, I, I've gotten, and we've gotten really, really good results with a lot of people. Just a couple of conditioning days, one mix that looks like a little more CrossFit, and then yeah. three solid strength days, yep. you know, with yep. that. Yeah. I like my conditioning to just be like machines. I don't want like a Metcon or yeah. something like that. But um, so I know the answer to this question. Is there such a thing as too much conditioning and yes yeah. yes yeah, um, but what does that look like too much intent probably too much high intensity conditioning would affect a lot or way too long of the slow intensity over and over like daily mm -hmm. someone they go and is like I, oh i run five miles three to four or five times a week right. and they're not actually training for something longer right. and they're out there for long periods of time that's going to pull you like you only have so much you could recover from yeah mm -hmm. And so if you're putting mo majority of time or a lot of your effort, you're, you're not going to be able to recover and see adaptation or results from other things you're doing, like your strength yeah. training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And even, you know, I'm going to take a shot here. The run clubs now that everybody's doing, right? right. It's, it's such a trend and it's basically like a dating app for people. I was yes, just going to say that. It is. I, I read yeah. that. And the people who are like, oh, I'm going to run every day of the week this week because I want to be ready for run club. 
I ran two miles today. I'm going to run three tomorrow. Then I'm going to run two more. It's like you, you're you still running. Like it's the same argument of repeated movement patterns. You're still running. You're pounding pavement. You're pounding on the treadmill. Your joints are still taking that same impact. Switch it up. Go ride a bike. Mm -hmm. Go sit on a rower. Hit a skier. Like, but people who run every single day and they think it's like a, it's a trend now. So I want to be good at running. So I need to run every day. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. It's conditioning every day. Whether right. you do five miles, one mile, or two miles, it's still running. And if I saw a person going on, if, if I if I went ahead and had a conversation with a person, never never saw them, yeah, and they told me how like they were running three or four days a week, yeah. long distances. Yeah. I already know basically how they're going to move, how fast they can move, oh, yeah. how, what, yeah. what it's going to look like. Yeah. Yeah. Their movement screen and then once in a while, yeah. you're, you're wrong, like, oh, this person actually, but most of the time yeah. you're right. Yeah. And what it causes, because to be able to do that over and over repeated, the body's going to kind of like tighten up a little bit just in those patterns. Yeah, absolutely. People forget the amount of like stimulus the body goes through during running. Like you are self-propelled. Oh, yeah. There's nothing else pushing you. Mm -hmm. It is your own willpower. Mm -hmm. So think about what your central nervous system has to compile and recruit to make you run. Right. And there's no come down after that. Like you mm -hmm. think that day is not a recovery for a 10 mile run. It's not. No. So, and people do that. Well, they'll do 10 miles and they'll do six and like, oh, I didn't do this much today. You still, yeah. your body doesn't recognize that. Your body doesn't know I'm going 10 miles. But what you often hear is, but that's, that's where that's my stress relief. Yeah. Like that's, oh, so that's where they day. need to find maybe like some other yeah. like mindset type stuff, yeah, yoga, you, yeah. what, you know, or whatever. Different stimulus. And I get it. Cause if you like, I like running, but if you ever, if you ever like zoned out into some kind of aerobic and you rode a bike for a period of time, you zone out yeah. and then you get done. It's like this euphoric, but yeah, kind of high a exactly, little bit. Yeah. One of the things I was going to jump into. So like we were getting onto like the zone and more, but anaerobic, like with your intervals or your more power output, what happens is the people that are highly aerobic and do longer distances can't really do anaerobic because they you have to be there. powerful. They can't right, get there. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, they have to be back. strong enough and powerful enough to to like create that response. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, you see them; they're not right. And they're like, "Oh, this is a cardio workout. I'm going to crush it." And it's like, yeah. "No, you're they not. can't go they like can't no. do the, like their intervals from their normal pace is not that far apart." Yeah. Right, right. So yeah. someone that, that's really powerful, that, that can have really effective intervals, you would see their wattage on any of the machines or even their speed on the running be completely different and so high compared to their pace. Yeah. But when people are mostly long distance or longer time duration, it's not that far away. No, not you see it all the time. All right, so in wrapping this up so that we can give everybody kind of some, some tools, um, say you're just general population, want to be fit, want to be able to, you know, produce power, want to be able to run a few miles if you need to, like do a 5K if, you know, on turkey trot or whatever. What what should their week look like in terms of conditioning? Well, I'm big on, it, like the setup, you six days a week, at least one longer day and then one more, like, higher output day. And then if you can ha have another day longer, then I would do longer before I would do more intense. Yeah. Okay, so you would do longer yeah. before you do. Yeah, and longer there. could be interval based too. Like you can do aerobic intervals, but they're like ten minutes with a three minute rest, and you do that three or four times. It's like as long as you're staying in that pace for a block of time, that builds. Okay, so in three days you're yeah. doing maybe like an interval based moderate, you know, distances. Like one, yeah, one day. And then you're doing a power output day, sleds, air bike, so thirty seconds on. Yes. You know. Yes. Two minute rest, whatever. And then maybe you're doing like a long, steady state zone. That would cover two. most yeah. of the people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. High, medium, low days is what I call it. Yeah. High, medium, low. So yeah. distance, time, intervals, and then you have like coverage, right? Right. That's like your distance. It's like the same thing with zone work. Um, and that's how I prescribe. And that's, that's what I found best beneficial for myself. I'm not a runner. Right. But when I do run, I, that's my three. I have a sprint day. I have a day where I'm going for distance regardless of the time. Mm -hmm. And then I have a day where I actually go for time miles, right? Okay. So I separate them, whether there's time miles are high, low, fast, short, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the same thing, covering a, a, and having a plan. That's the biggest thing. Like, don't just blindly go run. Listen to your body and then have a plan and then respond to that plan. Right. Okay. Good advice, guys. Yeah, because conditioning is important. I mean, as much as, like, I'm a strength guy, like, I'm, so I'm, like conditioning is right there for me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So don't let your conditioning overtake your strength gains. Yeah. Um, three days a week is plenty. Great advice, guys, and we will see you next time.